This is Scott with TutorialStop.com. We're going to take a look at Photoshop CS3's amazing vanishing point filter. Here you can see it's under the filter menu, vanishing point. I'm not going to click it yet though, I'm going to hit escape because we need to set the stage. Here you see this red barn with this nice area here. Now you could take a logo or any kind of picture and fill it into this area using the vanishing point filter. In this case we're going to class it up with this picture of the dogs playing pool. There's nothing like a velvet picture to classy things up. So here you can see this picture. The first thing I need to do is select everything in the picture by doing a control A, command A on the Mac. You can see as soon as I do that I have this nice selection going all the way around the photograph. I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to choose edit copy or you can choose control C, command C on the Mac. So I'm going to copy that. Now you can close this or minimize it whatever you wish we don't need that anymore now we're gonna pay attention to this barn photo next thing I'm gonna do is open up my layers palette I'm gonna click on layers and you can see I have a single background layer I'm gonna duplicate this layer I'm gonna click on the layer thumbnail I'm gonna drag it down to the new layer icon it's right next to the trash can and it duplicates the layer notice it's background copy I have two copies now and this is because I want to non-destructively edit this photograph meaning that it will do all my editing on the copy and if I don't like it I can just discard it. So now that I'm working on the copy layer I'm going to open up my filter. I'm going to click on filter vanishing point. The vanishing point dialog box opens up. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to get and hit your Z key if you wish. Click a few times on this wall. You can see here I have this nice wall but it's got some depth to it. It's kind of going back toward this vanishing point here. Next thing I'm going to do is click right up here under the Create Plane tool. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to trace out this plane. So I'm going to use these lines as a visual reference. Click there, click there. I'm going to use size of, side of this, this white side here as a visual reference. Click. I have one more corner to go. And again, I'm going to use the white edge here as a visual reference and click. I just set up this plane. Now if you don't see a grid with as many lines as I have, you can go up to the grid size and hover your mouse right over the grid size and drag to the right to make the grids larger or drag to the left to make them smaller. You can also click on the drop down here and use the slider that is provided for you. Now something that I want to point out is you might have gotten a red or yellow grid. If you get a colored grid that's something other than blue, it means that that grid, well it's mathematically impossible or that plane is mathematically impossible so you can see I have this red plane not good I need it to be blue all you do is click on one of these handles here and drag it slightly ah, there we go it snaps in when you see it turn blue that means we have a vanishing plane that is mathematically possible so you can make some fine adjustments here just make sure you have a nice blue plane and there we go so the next step is to remember we copied, we made a copy of the Velvet Dogs by doing uh, select all and then we copied it. Now we're going to paste it. So I'm going to do a control V to paste it into my project. You can see here's this large two-dimensional dog photo. Now I'm going to click anywhere on the dog photo. I'm going to click and hold down my mouse and drag it into that blue plane that we just traced out. As soon as I drag into the blue plane, bam, it just pops right into that area and takes on the vanishing perspective that our wall did. You can see as I drag it around, and I can set this up, and I can have it so that one wall is filled with the entire photo. But in this case, I want it to appear more as like a sign. So I'm going to come down over here in my tools. I'm going to click on the Transform tool over here on the left-hand side. You can just tap your T key if you wish, the T key as in Tom. I'm going to click on the Transform tool, and I'm going to hunt down a corner. I like starting from the upper right-hand corner. So I'm going to click and drag, click and drag, and there you can see right above the Scooby-Doo looking dog with the green hat is a corner handle. I'm just going to drag that down and then I'm going to scoot this back up. I'm going to click on that corner handle, drag it down, scoot it back up. So, And I'm just doing this so I can properly size it. Drag it down, scoot it back up, drag it down, pull it back up, drag it down, pull it back up. You can see we're almost done here. Now if you while doing that if you wanted to keep the width and the height in proportion to each other as you drag the corner handle you could have held down your shift key. You could have held down your shift key and that would have constrained the height and the width 
in proportion to each other. So that's pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm kind of lining up the middle here of my photo with the middle of the door. But what I find absolutely amazing is that it snaps to that vanishing plane and takes on the depth of that vanishing plane. Okay, so now we're almost ready to go. All I have to do is either hit my enter key or click the OK button. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. You can see now I've added the picture in the proper perspective into the vanishing plane that we that we outlined in blue to the barn. And I'm going to open up my layers palette real quick so you can see something. Here's that background copy layer. And if I choose or I decide that I really didn't like that, I can simply pop the eyeball. And I, I'm viewing now my old copy or my original background copy. If I want it back, click the eyeball again and you see the picture of the dogs playing pool. So vanishing plane, again, that is the filter, vanishing point filter. Absolutely amazing filter. The mathematics behind that filter are genius and it's so simple to use. You just make a copy, paste it, pull it into the vanishing plane, you're ready to go.